Hello, it's Saturday the 21st of March, uh, and uh, the world continues to spin as it always has done, and many things have changed, uh, and are going to change even further, no doubt. But uh, we gather again this evening to pray, to hear about our God, who is unchanging and unchanged, and uh, I'm going to just pray again and invite you to be part of that. thought tonight just to do something slightly different. Uh, I'm going to do evening prayer, but uh, actually the e the night prayer, but the traditional language version, uh, just because it's just something different. Uh, I think probably as we go on, I'm going to shorten because I'm aware that the um, uh, the videos so far have all been about 22, 25 minutes long, and maybe that's uh, a bit longer than uh, you need uh, just to have a, a time of reflection. So I'll probably be looking at changing the format of this slightly. Uh, but I thought I'd go with that for tonight. Also today is in the Book of Common Prayer, the old uh, liturgy of the Church of England. Uh, in uh, the uh, Book of Common Prayer calendar, today is the Feast of St. Benedict, uh, who is the founder and the originator of the Benedictine tradition uh, within the Church. And that seems very appropriate uh, when we're having to self-isolate and uh, do social distancing and all of that. Uh, to be thinking about this person who, who chose, was called uh, to follow a life of self-isolation, but for the greater glory of God and for the greater uh, glory of his own human spirit in a way, as he united himself uh, to God. So just going to bear him in mind as we pray, use the readings that are appointed for that. Um, but it's a slightly different, it's an older language form, uh, but still a time to pray. So let us, uh, again, be quiet together as we prepare to worship God this evening. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. And so we just pause to remember the day that's just been, uh, the things we have done, the things we have uh, failed to do. We just bring all those things to mind and, and offer them uh, to our Heavenly Father as we prepare to confess and receive his forgiveness. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Psalms appointed for today are the Psalms for the evening of the 22nd day, beginning at Psalm 108. And these are taken from the Book of Common Prayer. O God, my heart is ready. My heart is ready. I will sing and give praise with the best member that I have. Awake, thou lute and harp. I myself will awake right early. I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. 
For thy mercy is greater than the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Set up thyself, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth, that thy beloved may be delivered. Let thy right hand save them, and hear thou me. God hath spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice, therefore, and divide Sichem, and mete out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine, and Manassas is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Upon Philistia, Philistia will I triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? And who will bring me into Edom? Hast not thou forsaken us, O God? And wilt not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? O help us against the enemy, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do great acts, and it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Psalm 109 Hold not thy tongue, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the ungodly, yea, the mouth of the deceitful, is opened upon me. And they have spoken against me with false tongues. They compassed me about also with words of hatred, and fought against me without a cause. For the love that I had unto them, lo, they take now my contrary part, but I give myself unto prayer. Thus have they rewarded me evil for good, and hatred for my good will. Set thou an ungodly man to be ruler over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When sentence is given upon him, let him be condemned, and let his prayer be turned into sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be vagabonds, and beg their bread. Let them seek it also out of desolate places. Let the extortioner consume all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labour. Let there be no man to pity him, nor to have compassion upon his fatherless children. Let his posterity be destroyed, and in the next generation let his name be clean put out. Let the wickedness of his fathers be had in remembrance in the sight of the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be done away. Let them always be before the Lord that he may root out the memorial of them from off the earth, and that, because his mind was not to do good, but persecuted the poor helpless man, that he might slay him that was vexed at the heart. His delight was in cursing, and it shall happen unto him. He loved not blessing, therefore shall it be far from him. He clothed himself with cursing, like as with a raiment, and it shall come into his bowels like water, like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the cloak that he hath upon him, and as the girdle that he is always girded withal. Let it thus happen from the Lord unto mine enemies, and to those that speak evil against my soul. But deal thou with me, O Lord God, according unto thy name, for sweet is thy mercy. O deliver me, for I am helpless and poor, and my heart is wounded within me. I go hence like the shadow that departeth, and am driven away as the grasshopper. My knees are weak through fasting, my flesh is dried up for want of fatness. I became also a reproach unto them, they that looked upon me shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, O save me according to thy mercy. And they shall know how that this is thy hand, and that thou, Lord, hast done it. Though they curse, yet bless thou, and let them be confounded that rise up against me, but let thy servant rejoice. Let mine adversaries be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a cloak. As for me, I will give great thanks unto the Lord with my mouth, and praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save his soul from the unrighteous judges. Glory to be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Just to reflect briefly on that. In verse 27 of Psalm 109, the psalmist writes this, Though they curse, yet bless thou. I think it's interesting that a lot of that psalm is a curse. It is a curse against the psalmist's enemies, calling down uh, the wrath of God upon the people who are his uh, enemies. Uh, and I think it's interesting that when he uh, has rained down, called down this great curse from God, uh, he then prays in respect to his own life uh, that God would, uh, even though they are cursing him, that God would bless. And I think that that is a, a revelation of the reality of who God is. Again, as I've said before, that it's appropriate for us to cry out to God and be honest and truthful with how we feel. But my hope, my expectation also would be that the psalmist praying this, uh, these words, if he continued to do that, would come to see that blessing was the way of the Lord. That calling down curses on people, whoever we might think they deserve it, is not the way that God leads us into, the way that God teaches us. And so just as he prays for a blessing from God, so eventually my hope, my expectation would be the psalmist would also come to pray for blessing for his enemies. And so should we do. I've seen a lot on social media, as I'm sure you have, of people criticising all the ones who aren't like us, uh, who are panic buying and stockpiling and all the rest. Uh, people who are making things difficult. Well, let's pray a blessing on them. That they may be released from their fear. That they may be released from the things that are, are making them behave in these ways. And as we continue on with our lives in the days, weeks, months and years ahead, perhaps if we prayed a blessing on our enemies as well as on the ones we love, uh, maybe we would see the blessings flow in our own life and in our communities and our nations even more. Because God is a, a God of blessing, and not a God of the curse. I'm going to spend a moment with scripture again, and the scripture appointed for tonight is from John's Gospel, chapter 9, beginning at the first verse. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbours and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed, and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. respond in the words of the Nunc Dimittis, that gospel canticle from Luke chapter 2. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. 
Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. So we think about that story of uh, Jesus healing a blind man. Um, I've read before someone saying that one of the best metaphors we have, one of the best images we have for the whole uh, function and reality of the spiritual life is seeing clearly. That once you can see clearly, that really is all of your part. Everything else is in God's hands. But our choice, our calling is to open our eyes, to be awake, to see. And it's amazing how many of the miracles in the Gospels are connected to sight, how much Jesus has to say about people who can see, uh, can't see natural sight, supernatural sight, and the importance of that image, that idea throughout the whole of Scripture and the whole of spiritual writing, not just actually, of course, in the Judeo-Christian tradition, but around the world. In a way, seeing is the spiritual task of humankind. Perhaps at this time of crisis and havoc and staying at home and quietness being forced upon us in many cases, perhaps it's a chance for us to see again more clearly. Perhaps this is a, an opportunity for us to look again at the world, at our, our own lives, at our families. I went for a walk in Bedford Park today just to get some fresh air, uh, just to get out of the house, uh, maintaining appropriate social distancing, of course. And just looking around, there was a joy in all the other people who were there and seeing the families who, you know, I wonder, would they have been out on a sort of chilly day like this, uh, playing as they were, playing football, uh, just having fun? Would those families have been having that time together in that way if this hadn't been forced on us all? Uh, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. But it's an opportunity for all of us, like St Benedict. Uh, if you read his rule, he talks again and again about what we see and what we're called to see. Perhaps this is an opportunity for you and for me to look again and see truly what our lives are like and what the world is like that we live in. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. Let us pray. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace, and may thy blessing be upon us evermore, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness, 
and from the sons of light banish the deeds of darkness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. Abide with us, O Lord, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. As the watchmen look for the morning, so do we look for thee, O Christ. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, bless us and preserve us all. Amen. So I continue to pray for all of us as we continue on and uh, find new ways to see our lives and see the world and to see God, perhaps. And I look forward to joining with you for prayer again soon. So every blessing for you and uh, uh, until we uh, gather again uh, virtually and online. Uh, may the Lord bless you.